Section 7-4, Estimating a Population Standard Deviation or Variance. The main idea here is to introduce the chi-square distribution so that we can make confidence intervals to estimate the population standard deviation. Chi is a Greek letter and the distribution here is named after chi-square and it is key that we look at a normally distributed population to be able to estimate the standard deviation or variance. Informally, the chi-square distribution can be defined as chi-squared is equal to n minus 1 times s squared divided by sigma squared, where s squared is a sample variance and sigma squared is a population variance. This distribution is actually a lot more complicated and it involves a degrees of freedom measurement. Some properties of the distribution are as follows. Chi-square is mostly skewed to the right. It's not symmetric like the normal or the T distributions. It's dependent on the degrees of freedom and the larger the degrees of freedom, the more normal this distribution will get. Chi-square values are always zero or positive. It can't be negative. It actually starts at zero, and then it goes in the right side, the positive direction. Chi-square has different values or different distributions for different degrees of freedom. We'll be using table A4 to find critical chi-square values. In doing so, we will be concerned with looking at the area to the right of the critical value. Let's do a quick example of finding some critical values. Suppose we have a sample of 22 IQ scores and we want to construct a confidence interval for the standard deviation and that requires a left and right critical values for chi-square. Suppose we want to be at the 95 percent confidence level. Let's find the critical values. Table A4 is set up so that the numbers that we're looking at would be the area to the right of the critical value that we're looking for. And it's actually split up in half so that the five columns to the right and the five columns to the left correspond to equal tails on the left and right sides. In our example, we were looking at a 95% confidence. With the 95% confidence, our tails will make up 5%, and so we take 5% and split that in half. Each tail will have an area of 0.025. Table A4 looks at the area to the right, so if we focus on this area to the right, we have an area of 0 0.025. That will correspond to this column in your Table A4. The other critical value will be looking at the area on the left side of 0 0.025, which means the right side will have an area of 0 0.975. That will correspond to this column in Table A4. So now we take a look at our N, 22, and our degrees of freedom is 21. We look at the 21st row and identify those values in the two columns and we got one critical value at 10.283 and another critical value at 35.479. So here are our values. The chi-square L, the critical value on the left, is 10.283. Chi-square R, the chi-square value on the right, will be 35.479.
So our best point estimate for the variance, the population variance, is going to be the sample variance. Likewise, our best point estimate for the standard deviation will be our sample standard deviation. And here are the symbols that we'll be using for the formula that we'll use for the confidence interval. We have the population standard deviation and variance. We have the sample standard deviation and variance. We have the number or the sample size n. And the margin of error we won't be using much. And then we have the left tail critical value of chi-square and then the right tail critical value of chi-square. For us to construct our confidence interval, we need the following requirements. We want to make sure that the sample is simple and random, as always. And we have the population, we must have the population to be normally distributed. So here is our confidence interval. So the confidence interval for the variance will be n minus 1 times the sample variance squared divided by chi square r. This is on the left side, and on the right side, it's the same thing, except we're dividing by chi-square L. Notice the critical value on the right is on the left side of your inequalities. So the critical value on the right is actually a larger number. When you divide by a larger number, mathematically, that value will get smaller. So that's why it's on the left side. The standard deviation is the square root of the variance, and so the confidence interval for the standard deviation will just be the square root of all that. So here's a step-by-step -step process. If we want to construct a confidence interval for the standard deviation or variance, we want to make sure that all the assumptions are satisfied. We find our critical values, chi-square r and chi-square l, from table A4. We evaluate the upper and lower confidence limit intervals. And then if you're looking for the standard deviation, then we find the square root. We round off the confidence level limits. And the idea is that we won't, we don't want to round off until the very end. So here's a caution. Confidence intervals can be used informally to compare variation in different data sets. But overlapping confidence intervals should not be used for making formal or final conclusions about the equality of variances or standard deviations. Let's take a look at that same example, well, similar example. We have a group of 22 students who took an IQ test, and the subjects had a standard deviation of 14.3. So we want a 95% confidence interval to estimate the population standard deviation. So we'll verify that the requirements are met. We'll assume that we have a simple and random sample, and we'll also assume that the distribution is fairly normal. So we already found the critical values from our earlier example. With DF, the degrees of freedom, equal to 21, and uh, with the, with the confidence level at 95%, we found the chi-square L, uh, the left side critical value is 10.283, and the right side critical value is 35.479. So we put that all into the formula, and then we simplify it. So our variance is going to be between 121 and 417. So these points, these are variances, and so if we want to go to the level of standard deviation so that we can match up with the units, we can see that we can take the square root and get uh, our standard deviation to be between 11 and 20.4.
So these are actual IQ, IQ score points. So we can say that we are 95% confident that the limits of 11 and 20.4 contain the true value of the standard deviation. So that's our example. A small part in this section is to determine the sample, sp sample size when you want to estimate the standard deviation or the variance. So it turns out that it's a little bit more complicated than just using a formula and so this will rely on a table. So here's a table where we have uh, the sigma or the sigma squared, the standard deviation or the variance, and we want to be uh, somewhat confident uh, and then we want to match up with the, the actual value. So let's take a look at a quick example. We want to estimate the standard deviation for voltage levels at home. 95% confident that our estimate will be within 20% of the true value. So all we have to do is keep track of this idea that we're looking at 90%, 95%, and then we want our margin of error to be within 20% of the true value. So let's go back to the table, and we are looking for a 95% confidence so that is going to be 95% confidence for our standard deviation. So that would be this that would be this upper left hand section. And we want to be within 20%. And so it looks like our sample size should be 48. And so the corresponding sample size should be 48. Okay? So there's no actual formula for this, and this you may have a question in your homework about this, but uh, we won't expect you to, to come up with these ideas or this particular problem for the quizzes or exams. All right, that is the end of Chapter 7.